Hello and welcome to HelpYourMath.com. In this video, we're going to look at multiplication and division with scientific notation. Just a quick review of what scientific notation is. When numbers are written in scientific notation, they're of the form a times 10 to the b, where a is a number between 1 and 10, so we say 1 is less than or equal to a is less than 10, and b is an integer. And so knowing uh, if b is a negative, that means that we're dealing with a number smaller than 1. And if b is positive, that means we're dealing with a number bigger than 1. Now, what's going to end up happening with multiplication and division is we're given numbers written in scientific notation. So, for example, we might be given 6 times 10 to the something times 7 times 10 to the something. So we have 6 times 10 to the c times 7 times 10 to the d. What we want to do is we want to use the commuter the commutative property and we can say wait okay everything here is multiplication so I can commute and, and rewrite things the way I want them so I want to put my numbers together my numbers between 1 and 10 so I would rewrite this as 6 times 7 and then I want to get my powers of 10 together too so that would be 10 to the C times 10 to the D but then what ends up happening is I multiply 6 times 7 and what happens I end up with a number bigger than 10 so this would be C to the uh, 10 to the c plus d. Well, wait, what do I do with that? So I have this 42, it's too big, this number is not in scientific notation, so this is not the final answer. What we would need to do is we're going to play this balancing act with the two factors, right? If I do something to one factor, I have to do the opposite thing to the other factor. So if I have 42, I need to do what to it? I need to make it smaller. And if I need to make it smaller, then that means I need to take the other factor and make it bigger. So what I would do is I would move the decimal, I'm dividing this factor by 10. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide this factor by 10, which means I would need to multiply this factor by 10, giving me an extra factor of 10. So then we would put add one more on to the exponent. And then the same is true if we go in the other direction. So I'm just going to use a number because I'm sure using C plus D is like the weirdest thing ever. If I have 0 0.32 times 10 to the, let's say, fifth, well, 0 0.32, 32 hundredths is not in between 1 and 10. It's smaller than 1. So we would need to make this bigger. To make this bigger, we would multiply this factor by 10. How can I undo? I can't just willy-nilly multiply something by 10. I need to undo it immediately. So I would divide this one by this factor by 10. This is going to make this big enough to get it between 1 and 10. And then dividing by a power of 10 is the same as subtracting 1 from the exponent because we already have the base 10, right? This is like 10 to the fifth divided by 10, which would be 5 minus 1. So we would have 3.2 times 10 to the fourth. So we, we have to do inverse things to the factors so that we're not changing the value, but we are putting it in scientific notation. Let's look at some examples. We want to perform the following operation and write the answer in scientific notation. Okay, so the first thing I want to do, this is all multiplication. The parentheses are strictly there for decorative purposes just to say, look, I'm in scientific notation, and look, I'm in scientific notation too, hooray for me. But really they're not doing anything else. So we're going to use the commutative property and we're going to say, okay, I want to get my decimals together. So I'm going to say 8.6 times 1.2. And I want to get my powers of 10 together, 10 to the negative 6 times 10 to the third. Now I want to multiply these together. 8.6 times 1.2 gives me 10.32. And then here we use the properties of exponents. So this is same base multiplication. We would add the exponents. So this would be 10 to the negative 6 plus 3, which would be 10 to the negative 3. Okay, are we done? No, we're not, because look, it says write the answer in scientific notation, and 10.32 is ever so slightly bigger than 10. How do we fix this? Well, we're going to do opposite things to the two factors, right? I need to divide this factor by 10. Dividing this by 10 will move the decimal point, and that therefore give me a number between 1 and 10. If I divide one factor by 10, then what else do I have to do? I have to multiply the other factor by 10. So multiplying this factor by 10 this is 10 to the negative third times 10 to the first. That's adding 1 to the exponents. That'd be 10 to the negative 3 plus 1. So now what I have for my final answer, I have 1.032, a nice number in scientific notation, times 10 to the negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2. 
And that would be my final answer for this first example. Okay, in the second example, you might be saying, wait a minute, I signed up for multiplication, you didn't tell me there was gonna be division. Well, that's false because I did on the first slide. And also it's okay because remember division is multiplication. We're gonna use the same principles here. So I'm gonna to group together, I'm gonna to divide here, 1.2 divided by four. If you need to go off to the side and say, okay, I can do this, 1.2 divided by four, move the decimal point straight up, four goes into one zero times, four goes into 12 three times, and voila, I have divided. So I have 0 0.3 times, now this is same base division. So how do we do same base division? Remember we subtract the exponents. So this would be 10 to the negative eight minus negative two, we're subtracting the exponents, and this gives us 10 to the negative six. Now, if you're superb with exponents and you've been keeping up with them, you're very used to saying, wait a minute, we can't have a negative exponent, uh-uh-uh. But scientific notation is the one time that we actually use the negative exponent. We keep it as a negative exponent. So we're gonna write this, we have 10 to the negative six, 0 0.3 times 10 to the negative six. Done? Hardly. This number, 0 0.3, is smaller than one. We need a number between one and 10. So if it's too small, what do I do? I need to multiply it by 10. And multiplying it by 10 should be enough. I don't think I need to multiply by anything bigger. So I'm going to multiply by 10. And if I multiply one factor by 10, how do I undo that immediately? I divide the other factor by 10. So I'm gonna divide this one by 10. When I multiply this one by 10, it's gonna move the decimal point, giving me that nice number between one and 10. When I divide this one by 10, this is 10 to the negative six, divided by 10 to the first, same thing. This is 10 to the negative six minus one. I'm taking one more exponent away, or I'm taking one away from the exponent, and we have 10 to the negative seventh. Now we have a number between one and 10. We have a power of 10 that's an exponent. This would be our final answer. How about this example? Pause the video and see how you do with this one. Okay, how'd you do? So first we're gonna use the commutative property and we're gonna multiply our decimals together, 2.7 times 6.3. Then we're going to multiply our powers of 10 together, 10 to the negative two times 10 to the negative four. 2.7 times 6.3 is 17 and 1 one hundredth times, and then this is multiplication, so we're gonna add the exponents, that would be 10 to the negative two plus negative four, and that would give us 10 to the negative sixth. So we would have 10 to the negative six. Are we done? No, we're not. Why not? Because 17 is not a number between one and 10. It's too big. Uh, what do we have to do if it's too big? We need to divide by 10. We divide out one power of 10 to move that decimal point over. If I multiply one factor, sorry, if I divide one factor by 10, I need to multiply the other factor by 10. So I would have 10 to the negative six times 10 to the first. That would give me 10 to the negative fifth right, because that would be negative six plus one in the exponents, which is negative five. So writing our final answer, we have 1.701 times 10 to the negative five. In our last example here, again, I encourage you pause the video and see how you do with this one. What I might do is deal with the denominator first and then put it back together with the numerator. So if I'm just looking at the denominator, because this one looks a little bit hefty here, um, I'm going to first put my decimals together. Well, first I'm gonna write it. Then I'm going to group my decimals together. That would be five times seven. And I'll multiply my powers of 10 together too. Well, five times seven is 35. And then here we have 10 to the, that would be six plus nine. So that would be 10 to the 15th. Uh, if you don't wanna worry about scientific notation right now, you don't need to because we're not done yet. And in fact, it's probably easier to not deal with it right now because we're, you would immediately undo it. So let's see what we have. Putting this back together, we have 1.4 times 10 to the fourth divided by 35 times 10 to the 15th. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna divide our decimals. This would be 35 into 1.4. We're gonna move our decimal point straight up and we're gonna say, okay, 35 goes into one zero times, 35 goes into 14 zero times, add a zero here, 35 goes into 140 four times. And that is exactly 140, so we have our number. 
So the decimal point, decimal part of this is going to be 4 one hundredths times, what do we have? We have 10 to the 4th divided by 10 to the 15th. This would be 10 to the 4 minus 15, 10 to the negative 11th. So we end up with 10 to the negative 11th, and then we're done, right? No, never, never, never. Wait a minute, this one's tricky. This is 4 hundredths. How are we going to get this to be a number between 1 and 10? Multiplying by 10 isn't going to be enough, right? Because if I multiply by 10, I still don't have a number between 1 and 10. It's still smaller than 1. So actually, I'm multiplying by the second power of 10, which would be times 100 or 10 squared. So maybe 10 squared is a little bit nicer to work with. If I'm multiplying this factor by 10 squared, what am I doing to the other factor? I am dividing it by 10 squared. Multiplying 4 hundredths by 10 squared, which is the same as 100, will give me 4. And then what's the decimal part going to be, or the power of 10? Well, what do we have? We have 10 to the negative 11th divided by 10 squared. So this would be 10 to the negative 11 minus 2, which is 10 to the negative 13th. So we end up with 4 times 10 to the negative 13th is our final answer here. These have been examples of multiplying and dividing numbers written in scientific notation. Thank you for stopping by.